So I said, Friday Night Funkin', more like Friday Night... Uh... What? I don't remember. You don't remember, or the joke didn't have a punchline to begin with. Intro padding! Alright. What in the sweet top Tim as fuck is that? What? What am I? No. What the hell are you? Some kind of dishwasher? No, at least I don't think so. Do you wash dishes, Lubot? No. You moron. I don't wash fucking dishes. I'm your roommate. Now, I'm going to ask again. This time with slightly more urgency, what is that? Oh, uh, him? Dead. Uh, it's Jar. Just a robot from the channel Just a Robot. His name stands for Just a Robot. How original. What? Your name is literally your owner's name, with bot at the end. He is my owner, you overhyped Commodore 64. You're calling me a Commodore 64? At least my OS isn't Windows 98, you outdated bitch. Shut the fuck up! I'm trying to construct a pipe but uh, You're doing what? N nothing carry on, I'll just- What- what the hell is going on here? You're- I don't recognize you. That's Jar. Wait, no, 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 absolutely not. Ponies have an awful history with Jars. I'm not a mason, Jar. You seem to have the processing power of one. Alright, stop. You're all gonna give him a fucking stroke. Anyways, I'm gonna go work on my th thing outside. Hey, have fun. Why did you ask me over again? Oh, we're watching this. What in the fuck even is this? Godzilla vs. Hatsune Miku, so... Yeah. That sounds like the worst fucking idea. Our movie opens with greetings from the narrator, conductor guy. He doesn't really show up again, so I don't think it matters what we call him. Good point. So Humpty Dinky introduces the movie as a train and tells us to get on, sit down, shut up, and enjoy the ride. Not what I had in mind, and not exactly what he said, but it doesn't sum up the experience well. From what you told me, this is going to be a wild ride. What do you mean? This has all the makings of a masterpiece. Hatsune Miku, Godzilla, trains that transform into Great Value branded Gundam. Trains? What? They turn into Great Value Gundams. Is she okay? Okay. Like, did some kind of horrible trauma happen, making her think this sounds good? She hangs out with Dumpsville. And last time, they watched Clutch Powers. Oh, God. So the movie actually opens in a cave with some workers working, when suddenly a huge glowing crack in the wall appears. They report this to the company they work for that also happens to be the company in charge of the Transformers. I don't want to be here anymore. Fuck you, it was funny. Anyways, those companies are apparently one and the same. And soon after Godzilla shows up. Hell yeah he does! I thought you were joking! Why would I joke about something like that? Godzilla is very important to this household. So Hatsumiko is actually going to fight Godzilla. And it's over. Well that was fast. And now we meet the main character, Hayato Hayasuki, an 11 year old obsessed with trains. Wait, I'm used to Godzilla not always being the main character of his own movies, but if this movie is advertised as Miku versus Godzilla, why isn't Miku the main character? Wouldn't that just make more sense for the storytelling point? Sense and reason have no place in Butter's mind. She likes what she likes. Wow, Lubot, that's the nicest thing you've ever said about me. It wasn't a compliment. So Hayato is going on a vacation with his family to a ski resort where Miku is holding a concert. Wh Holy shit, what is that CGI? This looks like a bad PS3 render. Wh why did they do this? Why? To hurt you. It's proving to be very effective. So after that, Miku notices that the main character from somewhere and goes to get food with them. This movie needs more Godzilla. <laughs> Are you not entertained? Impressive. So Miku and him fight now, right? Actually, Hayato and his dad transform and fight Godzilla for about two minutes tops before he just hits them with the Dr. Octagonopus and kills them both so badly that Hayato shows up in Evangelion, his dad is missing, and a small child is randomly unconscious in the snow. What the hell is this movie? Art. I mean, 
art is subjective. So Hayato meets a random child that just appeared at the spot he was knocked out and tries to befriend him to no avail. I mean, would you really want to talk to anybody in this universe? I'd be shy too. Time and space opening up. Godzilla can teleport. Trains are Gundams. And Evangelion happens, and then it doesn't! Actually, that was only for a one-off scene, but I think that ended up being a dream sequence. What is this movie? I'll say it again. A masterpiece. I don't want to be rude, but this movie is all over the place, and we're barely 30 minutes in. Want to talk about the bad guys, then? Fine, whatever, sure. Let's talk about the villains. They can't possibly be controversial at all. They call themselves Valhallans, and not the Viking kind. And they have a train that turns into a deviant art interpretation of Mechagodzilla. Also, their entire goal is to take over planet Earth, because apparently they used to live there and don't anymore. But to do that, they need the newest model of the train's former series, the Alpha X? But why do they need it? Why did they leave Earth? What's the backstory? I don't know, watch the anime. After watching this movie, I don't think I want to. Honestly, I... I also refuse. Anyways, back with our young heroes, we discover that the random small child is the only person capable of driving the Alpha X, and it's here that everyone learns this is Hokuto, Hayato's dad, as a fucking child. Just what this movie needs, more random BS. If I didn't know any better, I think this movie is just some evil plan designed by a drugged out Bond villain to make everyone that sees it have an aneurysm. That would be more enjoyable to watch. Somehow I agree with you. Calm down, Jar. You're going to miss the part where they explain that the glowing crack in the wall at the start was actually the finished Alpha X train, that they actually had no idea how to finish, so instead of trying to look into it, they call it a day and say it's time shenanigans, and that's why it has to be Hokuto. Okay, butters. My friend Luan, please tell me that this is almost the end, and we only have one or two more massive monster fights left. By almost done do you mean 30 minutes and by one or two monster fights do you mean people talking i am not having fun but that doesn't tend to make for good content does it that's the spirit audiences love self-deprecation so next our group of ragtag preteens are in the cafe with hatsune miku just chilling in the background as they talk about their shock over the revelation that the small child is hayato's dad and during all of this, Hakioto seems to be in awe that all of those older kids are so open about their passions. This hits him hard because he's so used to being made fun of for liking trains to the point of keeping it a secret from everyone around him. Honestly, this was some decent character work, and for a second at the very least, Aw, you're starting to like the movie. One good scene doesn't make up for 40 minutes of mangled up plot. But what about two? It's worth a shot, I suppose. Well, then I have good news. It's time for the obligatory montage of Hokuto coming out of his shell. Of course it is. But that is cut short when Hatsio's mom and sister show up to see how everything is going. They quickly learn that this whole movie is holding on by a thread. And finally, for what feels like an eternity, we get some kind of action. It's been a minute or two since robots happened, hasn't it? So, the Mecha Godzilla train shows up, and our heroes get dispatched. A, like, two minute long cutscene of trains turning into mechas is cool and all, but you quickly realize they all kind of look the same in their robot mode. With minor details changed, of course. However, all the ones who have left already have been sent to different parts of Japan in the past. Then, Hayato and Hakudo talk about and come to terms with the fact that the white particles are to blame. Also, that Hakudo isn't Hayato's father, turned into a kid, but rather his father from the past. After dealing with this, they get into their trains and head off to fight the bad guy. Wait, is that a giant Beyblade in the sky? I think it is, and it also happens to be the home of our antagonists, the Valhallans. And as two of our heroes arrive for the fight, we get shown two completely different robots fighting? Is that Goblin Slayer versus a monster from Power Rangers? Your skills of deduction never cease to amaze me, Char. But anyways, enough of that fight. Back to the other fight where Hakudo loses control of the Alpha X and is made to attack his friend, son, Hayato. In a moment of panic, he realizes the only way to save Hayato is to destroy the journal that holds the origins of the Transformers. Hayato, however, calls him a dum-dum and reminds him to like whatever you want to like no matter what. I don't see how that applies here. Like, you will actually die otherwise? Why rely on plot armor when you don't have to? It's a kid's movie, Jar. 
there has to be a pointless, stupid subplot. There also has to be a lot of friends that help save the day. Oh look, it's, I'm guessing, some kind of alien ninja here to help, and the rest of their friends, and Godzilla, and Evangelion, and w when the fuck did Miku get back in her mech? Then they combine mechs, and they combo the bad guy, his dad comes back as an adult, the... And I guess you're right, this movie is a mess. Well, a mess doesn't mean it's all bad. It certainly seems like the kind of movie you'd watch with friends who haven't seen it before, just so you can watch their reactions to it. Movies like this are great for bonding over an experience, not over how good it is. And I'd say we certainly bonded over this experience. Aw, that's sweet. So you want to do this again next week? No. No, I don't. What was that? Okay, uh, if the cops ask, uh, my name is Applejack and I live in Colorado. I'm gonna leave now. Your name is what? And you live where now? Well, shit.